welcome back to Dean of the Dead TV. We are here in London, Soho, to check out Dan. <laughs> what are we here to check out, man? We are here to check out Dan, tell everybody. God damn! Evil Dead Rise, holy shit. So we're here a week before its official release. Um, the screen in it here, this is a pre-screener of the movie. Man, the horror community are going batshit, man. Every, and not, everyone can't wait to see this film. Um, and we are lucky enough to be here now, checking it out a week before its official release. Not only are we getting to watch the film, but post-movie, we've got a Q&A with Lee Cronin, the director, man. This is gonna be sick, we can't fucking wait. Dan, how cool is this gonna be? Just remember. Wickle, 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 wickle. <laughs> <laughs> Mummy's with the maggots now. Right, we'll check back in with you guys later. We will let you know. We're going to film some of the Q&A so you guys can watch that. And then we'll let you know what we think after the movie. Even though I've got to run for a train. Fuck that shit. It will dead rise. Yeah! Daniel and I are in the queue right now to get into the Prince Charles Cinema to see the second showing of the evening of Evil Dead Rise. And there's a queue. You can you see? Yeah. I mean, you know. And it stopped raining and stopped being windy, so I'll take that as a London mirror. Mm -hmm. All right, guys, we are here inside the Prince Charles Cinema, waiting for some Evil Dead Rise. What have you got, Dan? What have I got? Yeah. I got some Evil Dead Rise mini posters. That's super cool. Which I, I, which I took and then we'll go in my bag and I'll find in about a month's time all fucked up. It's like a, a, a large postcard. I love that though. Yeah. That's, that's nice. But no, no blank on the back. That's nice. Yes, yeah, nice for cool. reflecting light if you're taking mini photo shoots. Yeah, cool. Um, and uh, I've got my popcorn. Also got a ultra large bucket of popcorn. That is not ultra. Evil Dead! Yeah! Come on! Army of Darkness! Woo! Evil Dead Brackets 2013 Blues Brackets. Oh, good! Outrageous, outrageous. Uh, before we begin, the good folks at Scooby Canal would like me to tell you that they have placed Scooby Bags under five of your seats. So if you want to take a little look, you will find Goody Bags. Well, five of you will, the rest of you will find fuck all. But, <laughs> Goody bags between stuff you may use to kill a deadite or maybe break some cheese. It's entirely up to you. Did anyone find a goody bag under the seat? You find one? Yes! No. Hooray! Round of applause! Well done. Well, let me say you guys are in for an absolutely bloody treat tonight. And um, you please welcome the man who wrote and directed that, the fantastic Lee Cronin! because you're a tiny bit more liquored up than the earlier one, I can tell. <laughs> I can feel it on the way in. People are slower getting down the stairs. Um, thank you so much for being here tonight in this very spectacular and old school venue. It's really, really nice. I do know that The Evil Dead back in the early 80s played here and it was kind of a home for that movie. So it's beautiful for it to come full circle and be back here tonight and to see a full house. It's really gratifying. So my humble thanks for being here tonight. Um, I want to thank Studio Canal, uh, who are distributing the movie and are working their collective asses off uh, to make sure that we get as many eyeballs on it as possible. So if you like the movie tonight, please spread the good word. If you don't, there's a lot of dark alleyways nearby. I'll meet you there. And when you watch this movie, you know what I can do to you. <laughs> so please do spread the good word. And um, thank you all for being here. There's a little thing I like to do with these screenings and I'd like to do uh, tonight. And I know that... Um, the majority of you guys coming particularly to a theatre like this are horror movie fans. But when I get a show, a true show of hands of people who are not great with watching horror movies. Hands up, all of you. So many later at night. The rest are in bed. Look, keep them up. You're all fucked. Okay, let's go. Have a good time, guys. I'll see you after for Q&A. Q &A. Q &A. Teenage 
teenage years. We've got four hours of this Q&A, so this could be a really fun one. Thank you for sticking around. Wow. Did you have a good time? <laughs> Love it. Hell of a thing. Hell of a thing. Now, before, after the intro, as we were leaving, Lee, you said to me, I want to stick around and see the scalping. Now, the last time a director said that to me was Paul King before Paddington 2. <laughs> but when you were writing this, were you thinking about audience reactions like that? I knew I needed big moments. I knew I definitely needed things that people could have fun with. Mm -hmm. So one of my favorite things, I, I, I got to stick around for a little bit. I've seen the movie a lot recently, so full disclosure, I've had three double vodkas. It's why I watched <laughs> watch the movie, but I'm Irish, so it's fine. <laughs> um, my blood is acting normally. It's like one double vodka. Yeah, yeah. Um, your measures suck over here. But um, the, um, yeah, no, I, I knew we needed those moments. You know, I knew I needed pe uh, things for people to like grip onto and have fun with. It's, it's kind of a weird movie from my point of view, because I know it's really dark. But I also think there's entertainment in that darkness and the kind of madness. And I watch it with an audience maybe six times at this point. And once the scalping happens and people go, <gasps> then I kind of feel like I'm in. I'm with my friends. <laughs> so thanks, friends. <laughs> what are the other big moments for you that you were lacing into the script? My, my favorite part of the movie is um, that little run from the little kitchen fight scene between Beth and Bridget through to Stephanie having her payoff. Um, I, I, like, I, I just like that four or five minutes of the film. Um, I feel comfortable with that because it was extremely close to my vision. Because when you make a movie, you have your thoughts, you have your ideas, and you're fighting to wrangle all of the challenges of movie making as close as you possibly can to the vision. But that, that little five minute run in the movie was definitely straight out of my imagination. And how difficult is it to marshal things like that? Those, those, those periods where the, you know, everything is going to hell in the movie. You know, when Bridge is coming back, you know, she comes back to life and she's attacking, you know, Cassie and she's attacking Danny. Meanwhile, you have Ellie creeping in through the, uh, the ceiling and attacking, uh, attacking Beth. How do, you, how do you marshal that and make it work? It's quite a simplistic answer. It, it is in the edit at that point because when, when the, screen, the, screen, the screenplay was very detailed for this movie and when you break it down into a schedule, it's kind of impossible and then you're fighting to make the best of every moment that you, you possibly can. Um, and then you, it's like, I, my analogy always with filmmaking is that you write a shopping list, I'm gonna have an amazing dinner party for all my amazing friends. And then you go to the shop and you realize you've got a tenner and you're also in Lidl. And, <laughs> and then you try and buy the best things you can and put together some sort of pasta. And, and, that, and that's kind of how it works. It's like you, you, you do your best on set and then you bring it back. And I think, you know, the making of, of filmmakers is often in the edit suite. It sounds like a cliche but it is the ultimate rewrite in terms of what, what you have um, and, and what you've gathered and how you use that material. So when you first sat down to really properly write this, did you have a, a list of do's and don'ts of Evil Dead? Do not make it boring. Like, <laughs> if anyone here didn't like the movie, I bet you also were not bored. Um, but you know, don't, don't make it boring. Like, the spirit of Evil Dead movies for me is the entertainment factor and the energy before the horror. The horror was obvious to me, like it had to be. I could not make an Evil Dead movie without horror, without gore, without, without those kind of crazy madcap moments that people would have fun with, you know, or cheer at or squirm because of what they see. Um, but I just needed energy, energy and entertainment. You know, that was what, what it was all about making these movies. So where did this start? This movie, those yeah, movies. This, yeah, those movies. this one in particular. Uh, where did this start for you then? Um, We've had a little chat about this before it started yeah. um, with a, a meeting with Sam Raimi having sushi. Um, I don't like raw fish. And the only cooked thing they had was the eel. The fuck wants to eat eel? And also, I'm not eating my name backwards. Like, I just, I, I, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not one. Um, yeah, like, I, when it's three letters, it's taken me a while. Yeah, but we didn't talk about Evil Dead, we talked about everything else, because Sam is a producer, right? Like, so Sam has a million things going on. I'm a writer-director, so I've got two things going on. So I talked for 10 minutes, he talked for 50 minutes, and then towards the end of it, I just said, hey, what's up with Evil Dead? Do you want to do anything with that? Like, what's your plans? As a fan, he was like, we totally do. Why are you interested? And I was like, well, I'm a massive fan. And he didn't necessarily see that because he'd seen my movie, The Hole in the Ground. I don't know if any, anyone else has, here has seen it. Oh, thank you, five people. Um, <laughs> but, but like The Hole in the Ground is like a little creepy whisper at the back of your neck, whereas Evil Dead Rise is just like, take out your pants, 
covered in blood shaking in someone's face. It's a, it's a very different thing. So he didn't think I was an Eagle Dead fan because of what I'd made, but I was a massive Eagle Dead fan. Um, and once he learned that, and he liked the precision of the movie that I had made, uh, we just started to talk about what this beast could be. So uh, in terms of being an Evil Dead fan, what was your, what was your gateway? My father, who's 81 years old, that's him a chair, <laughs> Desi, uh, and he was at the European premiere in Dublin last week. Amazing. This tiny little peanut in a suit having a great time. <laughs> <laughs> I fucking loved it. He showed them to me because I grew up in a house where we had multiple horror fans, my sister, my brothers. I saw stuff I shouldn't have seen at a very impressionable age. So. It was kind of okay to watch those movies. And then I brought him back to see Evil Dead 2013 in 2013, right. which was great. We had, we had an absolute ball and it was a real treat then to bring him back to watch, watch this movie last week. Amazing, amazing. Um, because when obviously when you, uh, you take on an Evil Dead movie, you have Sam Raimi, you're working with Sam Raimi, but you have the, the specter of Sam Raimi as a director. And it's interesting how much you don't ape his style. Obviously there are, there are moments, the opening shot, is very much you know in, in that Raimi t tradition, but otherwise you you plow your own furrow, so to speak. Yeah, I think it's like I'm going to use food analogies again and cooking dinner. It's not I'm hungry that. because I <laughs> dinner. Um, but like Sam is on my Mount Rushmore in terms of the filmmakers that I look to: Sam Raimi, Peter Jackson, Sandy Kubrick. I hold the fourth one loosely and decide who I put up there from time to time. <laughs> but. But Sam um, is somebody that I guess like, would have got under my skin when I was younger. So I think there is an energy that comes from my influence. But you know, as you grow and develop as a filmmaker, you also have your own voice in terms of what you do. Mm -hmm. So I think there's this spirit of what those guys did when they were essentially nobodies and were raising finance from local rich people to make the first movie, which yeah. inspired me. Because I'm just a, a dude from outside Dublin that had a camcorder. Had a drum kit, so my drum kit bought a camcorder, tried to do special effects in my back garden. Bloody hell. Did you nail the camera to a plank? Like, I, I, I did, and I was not successful in my <laughs> Did you consult any experts in terms of if you were to fill an elevator filled with, with blood, would it cushion someone's fall if they fell in 14 stories? No, because I didn't want to have to get the answer of no. <laughs> then I would have had to be like, yeah, no, no, and then marshmallow service come out of the buckets, which would have been a whole different problem. But we, yeah, we did, like, it, the blood elevator was insane in terms of how to make it. Like, it's quite a simple scene in some respects, but how you put two actors into a small box with a cameraman, fill it with blood, and get your shots is not easy. So there's, there was about four versions of the elevator set to achieve that. Um, and the shot, I'm all about the secrets now because of the vodka. So the, the, the shot where, you know, it goes up the corridor and the deadites are shouting, no way out, no way out. Mm -hmm. That was a way of not showing the middle of the journey of the blood elevator. <laughs> because I had enough blood to fill the bottom and the top, but not the middle. So we built a little glass box behind the window that could go, let's use like two liters of blood that rise up in front of Cassie. And that's the thing, this is like a movie that's, you know, getting released globally, but I still have to use a bunch of independent techniques to actually succeed in presenting that madness. Amazing. What was the most difficult thing that for you to shoot? Um, no one will know the name of this, but again, I'll share it right now, which is the Marauder, which is that the weirdest family hug of all time. <laughs> um, that was incredibly difficult to shoot because in, 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 in basic anatomical terms, you cannot put actors through other actors. Um, <laughs> it's, 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 it's quite difficult. You try. There's probably some out there that if you pay them enough, <laughs> they will let you. But they didn't have the acting chops of the caliber that I needed for this movie. Um, but no, that, that was really challenging. We have to use every trick in the book from, I don't even know where to start, puppetry. Like the first shot where you see the marauder at coming out of the smoke, that's a fully puppeteered device with no humans in there. Um, but then there's other versions, there's different versions of suits that people have to wear. We have to use motion control so we could do multiple passes on different actors so we could connect them together digitally. That, that just shooting the monster, which is, you know, it's aggressive and it's, you know, it, it, it shows its presence, but its total screen time is probably under a minute in terms of what you see. Right, yeah. But it probably took us about a week just to do those parts, maybe longer, maybe 10 days of shooting. That's one of those things where you're cursing yourself on when you're on set. Go, why did I write this? Yeah, I regretted it. It was like they should have just fallen out of the blood elevator and walked. Oh, the gate opened up and they walked out. But <laughs> again, we wouldn't be here if that had happened. Very good point. Uh, any other questions for Lee? Yes, please. 
uh, right here in about the sixth or seventh row. Yeah, thank you. Yes, yes, sir. I really enjoy the film. Um, there's lots of wonderful moments of splatter in the film. Were there any uh, bits of gore that you you couldn't get in that you wanted to get in, or they or that they wouldn't let you get in, or <laughs> you thought no, that's too far. I'm not going to do that. I think once you start killing children, nothing is too far. Which <laughs> um, is part of my job, apparently, now. I don't know if it's a niche job, but it's, it's what not I do. your passport. Um, not your passport. I wish I could answer this in that way that serves fans where they want to know that there's more there, but actually, I managed to tell the story I wanted to tell and to kind of get everything in. And I've done some interviews, obviously, in the US, and there's a bit of confusion how this movie is not NC 17 and how we got an R rating without having to make any cuts. I don't have the answer to that. <laughs> um, weirdly, it's more character-based stuff that we had to leave on the floor, because I knew, I, sh I overshot what I needed with the family, because I wanted to have enough to craft these believable characters that you could have some sense of identity with before I flipped it all and kind of ripped that world apart. Um, and but in, in horror terms, there's, there's versions of scenes I would have maybe liked to have got a little bit more from or done a little bit differently, but we left probably 1% on the floor in terms of, of the violence. Um, and thankfully, you know, with Rob, Sam and Bruce, who are sick, twisted bastards, they supported my vision. You know, New Line Cinema, um, they have a history of putting out really hardcore horror movies, you know, the house that Freddie built. So I had a lot of support uh, in terms of that and really wasn't second guessed about what we were doing, which upon reflection now seems weird because Again, I killed children. <laughs> <laughs> there's a scalping and a decapitation in the first. Yeah, but, you know, they're gentle. They're gentle. Like, you know, she was a grown-up. It's a love time. All this a sequel to the previous four movies. Is that how you see it? A new adventure. <laughs> That's how I see it. Now, I was trying to just crack open the franchise in a different way. Timeline-wise, it just follows after what's happened before. Like, as chunky as the Evil Dead rules are, as all the fans will know, like, you know, it doesn't all quite join up, but there is a timeline, which is the first one, the second one, the third one. Well, the third one goes back in time. So the first one, the second one, hang on. The third one, the first one, if we're gonna put it in a linear order, the third one, the first one, the second one, Fede and then me, but they do go that way because there's three books of the dead, as I said, and when I met with Sam, I was like, you had one book, Fede had one book, I'm taking the third one. It hadn't popped up until this point in time, and this movie is very much in the now. Yeah. Um, so I guess it's a sequel. It's probably not a sequel to 2013, but it's probably a sequel to Sam's original trilogy. There we go. Fantastic. Uh, right, let's have some more questions. Yes, please, right here on the very, very end row. Thank you. Firstly, I enjoyed the film again, and um, what gave me the idea to do this remake, or whatever somebody wants to call it. It's a new adventure. Like a new adventure. I just wanted the paycheck, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, it's, it's, I'm an Evil Dead fan from childhood, and when Fede made his movie in 2013, I was trying to move, I kind of made my last short film, not that I knew it was, but that was the last short film I made before I made my debut feature film, which took me about four years in between. It is like the slippiest paddling pool to crawl out of to actually get to feature world. And it's not about jealousy, but I was like, I really would love an opportunity to make an Evil Dead movie. Um, and I just, it's not, I guess it's not about luck. I just made a film that Sam Raimi watched and then asked me the question. And I'm going to, kind of convert your question into a bit more information. My biggest, people have asked me, what was your biggest fear with this movie? You know, like, you know, serving the fans or taking on the franchise. That didn't bother me at all. Like, I'll just, you know, I'm Irish and I'm brazen, I'll give it a go. <laughs> my biggest fear was saying no, if I couldn't find a story to tell. That was my biggest fear with this. Given the opportunity, had I not found a set of characters and a set of circumstances to set against the horror, I would have just passed and moved on to something else. And that scared me more than making the movie. So Sam didn't have any stipulations, or, or Rob Tappert, or, or Bruce? Not really. Sam just said, use the book and make the dead eyes scary. And I said, of course, and then on we went. But it was kind of that simple in a way. And um, because they, they really liked my last movie, um, and they liked, as they say in Hollywood, they liked my take, which was to change the, the circumstance, change the, the world that the movie was set in. Um, 
And then when I wrote the screenplay, they were like, oh shit, this guy understands Evil Dead in a, in a horror context. Because quite often, producers will commission you to write a script and then just freak out. Like that's, they have money to spend, that's how it works. But they vibe with the script kind of right away. And, 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 and you know, the first draft of this screenplay is probably about 85% of what you saw on the screen. It didn't wow. change a lot. And that does not, as a writer, that never happens. This was a joy, it just kind of clicked for me. And I guess that came a little bit from my fandom, but more importantly, it came from finding the people that are in the movie. I am now So, you know, stuff like zombie flesh. Give it up once again. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. I hope you make your shoes home. Hey guys, that concludes our trip to the Prince Charles Cinema to see the new Evil Dead Rise movie. It was incredible, it was so, so good. I'm not gonna deep dive into it on here. Um, I just wanted to show you a little bit of the Q&A from Lee Cronin, the director. He was a real character. Um, I didn't get everything that he said, but I wanted to listen to some of it and not just film all of it. He didn't, to be fair, I didn't miss much of it. He didn't chat for much longer than what I actually captured. Um, but yeah, he was a real character. We'll do an actual proper review somewhere down the line, um, but but um, I'm gonna leave this one here. I'm not gonna sort of deep dive into the movie, but I can tell you it was incredible. It was so good. Um, and yeah, Finn Wolfhard was sitting behind us with his dad for the whole movie. <laughs> that, was, that was weird, but hey, he's just a human like the rest of us, right? But yeah, he was a really sweet kid. We met him after and he was a really nice guy. See the picture here. I'm going to insert the picture here. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching Dean of the Dead TV. Uh, please like, please subscribe, please continue to watch. That is what most motivates us. Mot that is what motivates us. That's what I was trying to say. Peace.